We start today's Sportsmax Zone on a Friday with news that a Supreme Court judge, Andrea Thomas, has granted an injunction to delay the Jamaica Football Federation's election by 28 days. As it stands, the election cannot take place before the 10th of February 2024. This came after Pat Garrell, head of Beach Soccer Jamaica, and her executives filed an injunction to be recognized as a legitimate beach football governing body in Jamaica and hence eligible to vote. They were deemed ineligible by the Michael Ricketts-led Jamaica Football Federation, while another body was formed and given voting rights. This is also true for three other bodies, the Referees Association, Coaches Association, and Intercollegiate Sports Association. Now joining us on set today is a man who has contested his fair share of elections, some of which were as contentious as uh, this upcoming JFF election. Dave Cameron, former president of Cricket West Indies. Welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Of course, he's a part of the Real Solid Action uh, Raymond Anderson team challenging Michael Ricketts for the presidency. We suggested earlier on the show, Dave, as we welcome you, that today's development isn't totally shocking, is it? Um, good afternoon, Lance, Maria and Ricardo. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, that matter while I'm a part of the Real Solid Action team, is not under all purview, uh, as you'd understand. So Pat Garrell, in her own wisdom, has thought that they have um, been disenfranchised, and so they've taken on that action. Um, so it's not necessarily surprising. Um, what I would say to you is, from the Real Solid Action team, all we've been asking for is that the JFF follow the rules. Um, and I would like to say that it's another bumbling of the current JFF. Uh, what I'd like to also say is that having dealt with the JFF for better part of three, four years, because I, I invited myself to assist with the negotiating negotiations of the players, mm -hmm. I'm yet to still see and understand who is the legal representative for the JFF. And so I think they're going, they're flying by the seat of their pants by what? The layman view of the, the legal terms, and I think that's what's getting them in trouble. Mm. Can I say something quickly, <coughs> though? Because we know that FIFA's posture to court issues and challenging national federations is not something they embrace, which I, I, I suspect is a reason why you've made it clear at the top of the show here that this injunction today has nothing to do with a real solid action. Mm, that's correct. Uh, because you don't want to float the the JF, the FIFA statutes oh, and making it clear that this is the coaches beaching beach uh, beach soccer association that that's is correct. challenging it on their own on their own and, and on not their own. and not under your banner that that's correct my understanding as well is that the coaches association wanted to challenge as well um, and fortunate unfortunately the one of the members got some kind of threat and so they they withdrew from from the action a threat. Yeah, I mean, I, I, those are the, the allegations, yeah. which, which is quite unfortunate. I mean, again, I urge the Football Federation and all other sporting bodies, just, you know, play by the rules, play fair, and um, we won't have these challenges. Yeah, how do you feel, though, after <coughs> this news broke? No elections until Feb... Well, it can't happen until after February. Well, a little disappointed because we were looking to be in office on Monday. Yeah? Um, so confident? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll wait, we'll, we'll, we'll wait the 28 days because it's important that the, the, the legitimate bodies um, get a chance to be part of the, the elections. The, the constitution was changed deliberately to allow a widening uh, of the votes. And my, my, my running mate, Keith Wellington, made it very clear on another forum that they didn't want 13 members times four votes plus four. It was that we widening the, the stakeholders in the sport to determine who are the best persons to be able to take Jamaica's football forward. Dave, one of the narratives coming out of the RSA team mm -hmm. has always been ethical breaches. You've started the show by talking about just follow the rules. 
Can you talk to us about some of those ethical breaches? Yeah, well, again, um, and, and I work with my constitution, I'm armed <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, with my constitution. Uh, so, so, so simple things. The constitution was, was adopted in December 2022. It gave the, the organization one year to regularize um, and to admit the members into, into, into membership. Um, the first thing it said was the status quo remains, um, but the next election, all these things shall be in place. So it gave the JFF an entire year to put all these things in place. Whether they understood that it was their prerogative to ensure that everybody was compliant or not, they didn't do it. And so we got down to September when it was now time to have the next elections. And then we started to run around to determine um, who are the electors, etc. And those are, those are where the challenges have come in. Um, and, and again, like I said, Maria is very, very unfortunate. One of the things also highlighted was conflict of interest, an issue with the JOA president, Christopher Samuda, holding the post with regards to the electoral committee that he does. Can you talk to me about that? Samuel? Well, I mean, I don't... Listen, the, the conflict of interest, I'm sure you and I are conflicted and... Um, and Ricardo, because Ricardo is a member of um, Ligany Club, and I used to be a member there. So we have some conflicts around. So we're a small community. <laughs> um, uh, uh, that's the truth. Our challenges were, um, and still remains, that we didn't feel that the committee was, was doing what we felt it was set up to do. And so hence, you know, we're saying it must be because of there's some other, other reasons. And that's all we're saying. Yeah. The, the, the Electoral Committee felt that they were not empowered, and rightly so or wrongly so. There is a decision that we have filed as the RSA team now that we can speak about that. Um, there is an appeals committee that sits on top of the Electoral Committee, um, and we filed an appeal on the basis that the, the Electoral Committee has not acted how we felt they should have um, in protecting the integrity and the rules of the Constitution. Now, the Electoral Committee, in their wisdom, felt that those things are not in their purview. Um, and and that's, that's what we're challenging. Yeah. And I'm glad you went there, Dave, because I want to read something here quickly. Article 8 of the Electoral Code speaks to the eligibility of candidates vying for office. And I'm bringing this up because I think this is such a significant matter that we have not spoken much about. Part 1 and 2 of the general provisions of <coughs> Annex A of the JFF Constitution speaks to the integrity of screening of all candidates in the electoral process. It goes on to say, the presidential candidate for one of the slates, Mr. Ricketts, has a very publicized, unpaid Supreme Court civil judgment against him for defamation, wherein he also breached Article 23 of the FIFA Codes of Ethics, which states as follows, and it goes through that, and then there's a part that says, this candidate cannot therefore qualify for office. Part of what you are challenging is the legitimacy of Michael Ricketts's candidacy for president of the Jamaica Football Federation. Uh, we're not challenging Michael Ricketts' legitimacy. We're challenging the fact that all of the candidates must go through that integrity screening. Um, and I, like I said, the Constitution says everybody in office is fine. They've been grandfathered while this, this, before an election. And for the next election, everybody shall go through that process. That's what we're saying. And we're saying, we're asking the question. We're not the judges. Yes. We're asking the question, is this okay? And somebody needs to come back and say, that's fine. Is there a strong suggestion, though, that if you go through this process, that Mr. Ricketts may not qualify to be a candidate? I, I'm, I'm not a judge. We're, we're asking the question, and we leave it there for somebody to determine what, what, the, what the response is. Mm -hmm. But if it came back, and, and, and <laughs> let me get this straight, right? Because usually when you ask those types of questions, there is... A particular there, 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 response been, been that you expect of, based on the other information candidates as well. that you have. No, but it's been asked of other candidates. All I'm saying is, is that if there's a reason for um, allowing it, then we need to understand what's the reason. If it's not, then it's disqual he's disqualified. And any other candidate 
who are similar issues. So if he's but are you saying you're not seeing the reason at this stage as well, to we have why not, we he have not should been be provided. Alone. We have okay. been provided with the reasons. Okay. And so we've appealed that as well. Mm. A question that I keep asking, Dave, is there is a FIFA consultant in the JFF offices now for a thing going up to a year. I know his primary role was to oversee the financial happenings there because the Jamaica Football Federation has been on financial restriction. For about for, six years. For about six years because of their improper or inefficient handling of funds, which a lot of the Ricket supporters, to me, seem not to realize that this is a pretty serious issue. But uh, on the question that Ricardo is asking about eligibility and so on, isn't this FIFA presence inside the JFF corridors um, not in a position to say something? Yeah, to, to have I'm, some role into making sure that, that things are going well? Well, I think that, again, the FIFA statutes, um, and again, I'm just learning, you know, football as I go along, so, so, so excuse me. You know, I'm, I'm a cricket man, but um, the, the, FIFA, the FIFA will not get involved until we've exhausted all of the opportunities at this level. So, mm. so hence, no, no response from them. So mm. there is a, an electoral um, committee, there's an appeals committee, um, and once we've exhausted that, then if we believe that we need to go, then there's a CFU, CONCACAF, and then FIFA. You, you just referenced some of the handling from the electoral commission that you suggested didn't operate in a way that you were anticipating they would have. Mm -hmm. Would the issue of some of the parishes which were not documented as um, legitimate companies and hence uh, the, the feeling that they may not be eligible to vote um, but cleared I gather by the electoral commission Samuda's group that it's okay they can vote is that something that has disappointed you as well? Well, it, it, it's not that it has disappointed us. Um, they were not aware. So again, um, another bumbling event in that it's been a year that this constitution was passed. Yeah. And the first line of it says that all members must be registered in Jamaica and domiciled. Yes, as legitimate companies, legitimate organizations. Yes, yes. And up to this point, about six parishes are not. That's correct. So, yeah, you know, I, I think I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you, Dave, because, and I gather from earlier on in 2023, the FIFA consultant and the various meetings that they were having kept nudging the authorities within the JFF to say, you know, this is something that has to be dealt with. And this was March, so, April, so, May, June. Absolutely. And we get to September and October and it isn't dealt with. Yeah. So one of the first things that we will have to do when we get in office is to employ a corporate secretary. <laughs> um, you know, again, a lot of the things are bumbling because of it. Um, so fortunately, we have, we have two lawyers on board yeah. um, as on part your, of our team. Slate, yeah. And um, well, one lawyer and we have you know, other persons around. But it's important to just follow and understand what the statutes are saying. Don't, in, don't interpret it as a, as a I mean, layman. And I think that's, that's, that's some of the challenges. Yeah, so you're suggesting it. the JFF needs a corporate secretary. In Correct. other words, that's you don't think that the general secretary no. can handle all of this? No, that's not your prerogative. Because, again, the corporate secretary is responsible to the board of directors, not necessarily to the organization to ensure that the board of directors does the right thing. Yeah for the company. And the okay? GenSec does And what? the GenSec is dealing with the company, is, is running the day-to-day. -day. The GenSec is the CEO, the CEO. Yeah. Let's be very clear. But legal, all the legal matters ensure taxes are paid, um, all these things. That's the corporate secretary's role. Um, and I think w whether Dennis is competent or not, um, he's not been able to grasp all the, the matters that are required. And it's a huge company. We're talking about the, the annual revenues of JFF is just short of a billion dollars, the 2022 numbers. Um, this is a massive company, and to be running it without legal, daily legal advice, scrutinizing these kinds of documents, ensuring that we're compliant, um, legal. We just signed a massive, um, Mike Ricketts spoke about a, a massive deal with, with, with Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. 
um, who was a lawyer for the JFF um, on that deal, spoke about massive revenues coming in for the, 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 the parishes and all of this. And sounds good. And once we get in office, if the Congress believes that that's how the money should be spent, we'll go along with it. Uh, we feel that there are different ways to ensure that if those royalties, the 1.2 million, whatever is coming in, we need to ensure that the future is secure and not just go and spend it um, as we get it. But how do we ensure that the future is sustained? But again, as I'm saying, who is a lawyer for the JFF that would have perused those contracts to ensure that the JFF is given the best deal? Okay. How soon are you expecting a response from the appeals committee? And none at all. Yeah. <laughs> so will you send us a message so we can update our viewers? Because um, you'll be the, gone. And, and I must tell you, the, the, the appeals committee, the, the way they conducted themselves, uh, our team was very, very impressed with the, the conduct of the meetings. And we believe that we will at least get an opportunity, um, if they can't rule by now, um, to be heard further. Um, and that's, I think that's what we want, that these matters are properly fleshed out before an election. Having the, um, the stay then also gives us an opportunity for them to, I think, act um, a little bit. Yeah. Better. And the appeals committee, by the way, is chaired by Ruel Gibson. That's correct. Yeah. Um, interesting times ahead, Lance. Yeah. You know what? I, we've got to wrap the segment pretty soon, Dave, but I started the show by suggesting that given the, 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 the pillars as they were heading into this week, a, a lot of them appeared favorable to the current JFF um, administration. Several of them, as we have mentioned, the Coaches Association, the referees and Intercol and so on, have been challenged by your, your, your group. I say, I say this to say that you expressed huge confidence just now that you would have won the election on Sunday, regardless of the makeup of the slate. But given the injunction now and the possibility that the Mike Ricketts pillars that he had been confident about could now be shaken, it appears that if those things happen through this injunction, then it puts the Real Solid Action team in a better position to win the election. You're suggesting by your earlier pronouncements, Dave, that you didn't need that. You would have won anyway. Oh, we, we, we are confident that we would have won. I mean, you know, the, the truth is, the, Mike has announced that, he's, that, that we've done very well. Um, all these things that have announced, you know, sponsorships, well, one sponsorship, Adidas. The challenge is, that all the other partners have disappeared, including Sidella Mali. And he says, well, she said that she's supporting him. Now, you know, you can, if you believe that, then my mother is a man, but that's another matter. Um, what, what I'm saying to you is that we have garnered, we are, the, we are the challengers. And today we sent out a release, have you seen it? That we have garnered um, roughly $200 million to support the parish associations, Tier two men's football, tier one women's football, um, and people are calling us because if this was a national election, is, is there will be no election. Is that two hundred million over a year or over uh, several I'll, years? I'll give you the details at another time, Ricardo. Okay. I know you. I know you'd ask for details, and you want to know who is, who are, what the sponsors. Money, yeah. We're not going to no, no, give no, you not that, that as far, well. Because I was just part of the thing is that sometimes I know that these announcements can sound grand and the money can sound yeah, a lot, yeah, but yeah. when you go into the details of the period, then you think to yourself, well, maybe it's That's... not that much. Well, well, j just think about it. Right now, we're, we've lost um, whatever Sidella Mali was giving, right? Yeah. Um, if you look at the JFF's uh, sponsors list, I think they have like four sponsors coming from a list of maybe 40. So while there's one deal that they've done, we've lost all the partners and support, including FIFA. Um, there's at least a half a million dollars that, at FIFA that we've not been able to access annually for the last six years. If you do the math, that's $3 million because we're under restricted funding. 
And everything that we do, we have to report very, very um, yeah. carefully. So I think the delegates realize that at this point in time, well, they've done well. We, we're not going to argue about the fact that what has happened has happened. We've gone to two World Cup, um, the women's team. Uh, we've, we've improved in our rankings and etc. But at the end of the day, the administration of JFF um, needs a lot of work and leadership. And they've shifted their own personnel um, in the pronouncements. Again, you know, uh, people like Raymond Grant has been the, the JFF general Jane secretary. Sick, yeah. You're now saying he's going to run the day today, so I don't understand that. Um, where's, so what's Dennis Strong doing? Um, right. That's that's what's been announced. So yeah. so you tell me. Yeah. Um, and he's now running travel, taken away from Bruce Gaynor. So I'm not sure. When you look at all of that, what exactly? The JFF is saying that we are not competent to run the business as constituted. And the real solid action team, including Raymond, um, and the team, again, just for information of all my viewers, are Keith Wellington, the president of ISA, Mr. Powell of Mobe United, who has developed that team and sold the team, Carol Beckford, as you all know, Jackie Cummins, um, the former president of the Bar Association of Jamaica, Raymond Anderson, um, myself, and Danny Beckford, who has done tremendous with St. Anne football. St. Anne football is probably one of the, the, the beacons within, outside of Kingston, outside of Kasafa. Probably has more teams than any other parish. Yeah. Those are the persons putting themselves forward with Raymond Anderson to take Jamaica football forward. Yeah, Dave. Dave, a pleasure having you on the Sportsman Zone. Thank you very um, much. As, as, as usual, um, the huge story today, that injunction taken out by the um, Beach Soccer Association, uh, challenging them being disenfranchised as uh, legitimate uh, voters for the JFF elections. Scheduled for Sunday, but the injunction now uh, means there is no election coming up on Sunday. The earliest election can be held is the 10th of February. So watch this space. On Monday, I'm sure we'll have a lot more discussion on this. Uh, mm -hmm. We go to break. Back with more on The Zone after this.